Hey Foz Tube, it's Lee from Creatively on Sunday the 23rd of April 2023 with Foz Tube number 174. Yeah, four. Uh, welcome, welcome back to my weekly YouTube video about counter cross stitch and random crap, but mostly counter cross stitch. Although maybe today it won't be, who knows? <laughs> don't, don't have much to show. Um, yeah, so another week, another one in the bag. Uh, we have a long weekend. No, we don't. We have Tuesday uh, as a public holiday this week coming, uh, Anzac Day. Uh, our, I guess, Memorial Day, <clears throat> for want of a better word, um, for our um, service people. <clears throat> um, excuse me, bit of a humbug. I elected to not take Monday off, so I will be working on Monday, although a lot of people have Monday off, and I think technically it's still school holidays until Wednesday, so hopefully I'll get a whole lot of work done tomorrow, Monday, without any many people bothering me to do, distracting me, so yeah, hopefully I'll get quite a bit done tomorrow, then of course Tuesday off, and then I'll probably be Wednesday, Thursday, in the office, work from home on Friday, and then um, we have the Stitchy, Wellington Stitchy get together on the next Saturday, um, where we're doing a buy and no, a sell and swap event, loose, not compulsory, but, um, and sort of thought maybe it's an opportunity for a few of us to bring along some of our stash we want to exchange for other stash or sell um you know good quality stuff that we just aren't going to use i've got a few bits of fabric to take along so i'm quite looking forward to seeing what other people are doing um in the weekend after that we will be going to dunedin for the dunedin stitching for the new zealand dunedin whatever stitching retreat um so in honor of that i thought today i would make my cup of tea in my mcdonald mug that i bought when i was in dunedin in 2021 so it's still scalding hot, so I'm going to burn my tonsils probably. Ooh, it's hot. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about that weekend away. I think I talked about it a little bit last week and talking about getting a rental car and but anyway. Doing some sightseeing. I had some niggles in the back of my mind about this rental car. Um, so I checked all the stuff and I was like well I need to I think there's a voucher I've got to take and I'm going to print that out and kind of getting myself ready you know three weeks out and what had been niggling me is that when I booked it there had been something about a security deposit or something but I couldn't find anything where it was and then um, all the documentation said you know refer yeah you know, the security deposit will be charged on pickup um, if you know you don't have a valid credit card or whatever, you won't be able to get the car. Um, see terms and conditions or whatever. Gosh, it took me ages to find what the security deposit was. In the end, I, you know, control F to find the word deposit, and I finally found it hidden in the small print. Nothing that was really that visible. Like. It's not cricket, as they say, when you, an organisation, a company is not open about what the effing costs are. Two and a half to three and a half thousand dollar deposit they were going to expect me to give them picking the car up on that Thursday evening. Um, first of all, I don't have a card that has a three and a half thousand dollar limit, let alone a balance available. Um, and there, even though I had paid for the upgraded and um, like the no waiver, no waiver, no claim, whatever, you know, insurance is covered. They're like, oh no, if there is a claim, if you bring the car back and we're not happy, we will keep your deposit and then you will put a claim through the insurance company. I'm like, ah, uh, no, it sounds as dodgy as heck. So I <sighs> cancelled it and had a look around and, um, Every other company was double the price, like $800. And I was like, fuck it. I just cancelled it. <clears throat> so I just changed my plans. I'm not going to do the sightseeing. I will definitely go back to plan A in the future and take my car down once these um, freaking um, 
inter-island and ferries get sorted where they're reliable and not breaking down all the time, um, take my car down and do a bit of a road trip. And I um, have someone picking me up from the airport on the Thursday night and we'll just grab taxis and Ubers if we need to, if we can't get a ride to and from places. And that's fine. If I want to go out to Larnac Castle, I can catch a bus. Can't really get to the albatrosses. But even then, I'm like, well, I kind of like to do the big tour with a boat trip and everything, which is several hours. And I'm just I'm not fitting that in. So I change of plans. It's how it is. Not taking a rental car now. Um, we'll just focus on being with friends and stitching and relaxing. And it sounds mighty fine to me. No regrets. Decision made. So, yeah, what a bloody rip any other time I've rented a rental car and I've paid for like the insurance like the you know no whatever the insurance upgrade I've never had to leave a deposit except when I was in when I picked up a car in San Francisco and I think it was something like $150 it was a really small deposit I'm not even sure I paid a deposit you know I'm thinking I remember that I was meant to be charged to an additional fee because I dropped the car I didn't return it to San Francisco I left it in Seattle and they were meant to be charging me 150 bucks there I think that's where that money comes from and they never did so whatever that's to say I'm looking forward to Dunedin not going to get a rental car going to sneeze in a minute because allergies so I sneezed <laughs> I um <laughs> I had a lot of animals, although the dogs in theory are anti-allergy, but I was over at my friend's um, last night for dinner and for several hours and um, ended up with a lot of cat hair on me. And while I love cats, I am a little bit, a little bit allergic to them. So I probably should have taken an extra flexinase this morning, but I did it. Okay, so yeah, I've talked about what's happening these couple of weekends. Um, work, meh, dad, okay. Um, went to a movie on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, can't remember what day. Mafia Mama, um, it was ridiculous, very funny, I like shrieked with laughter, um, Tony Collette's excellent, incredibly violent film, I think it's an R16, um, whew, was, there was, it was some kind of edging on spoof, but it was a little bit too violent to be a spoof, you know what I mean? But it was a comedy, it was random, but anyway, love Tony Collette, she was great, it was funny, recommend if you can handle ridiculous and violent. I intended to do a bit of finishing this weekend, but I left the house at 9.30am yesterday, which included going to Busy Bees in Kilburnie to get a couple of pieces of fabric for finishing, and caught up with a friend for coffee, and then had to pick up some feed gels from work. A colleague had dropped off a huge bag of feed gels for me and I picked them up, got to process them today. Um, and then I went and caught up with another friend and then I talked to dad and then I went to the supermarket and then I came home. By the time I got home, it was like four o'clock and I was heading out for dinner, heading across the road at 5.30. So yesterday was a write off. I didn't get that much done, but that's okay. I haven't bought anything new. Um, I will get my Rainbow Club and Silks for You this week, but <clears throat> my mail day is Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday's a public holiday, so it won't come till Thursday. So next week I should have those to show you. Oh, I did buy something new. I told a lie. Many of us in the New Zealand Cross Stitch Facebook group are aware of Carla, I think it is, from Orderly Stitching. I'm just covering up a code, so if you purchase something from her, you may get a card with a code. I think you should purchase something before you get the code. Um, so there is her details for her site, orderlystitching.co.nz, and she sells stitchy related things, little project, little notions pouches, um, acrylic, uh, floss tags, and floss drops and bobbins, um, the stickers, the, all the DMC colours, um, really lovely stickers, I bought these stickers ages and ages ago before she had the website. Um, a lot of her things are like New Zealand themed, she's also started doing a uh, little monthly kits, their mystery kits I think, where she's doing a little bit of designing again around New Zealand birds and things, her little blue penguins are cute. 
Uh, she just worked on a poppy one for Anzac Day with a Kiwi. Um, so go check her out. And she had a sale. I think she's just getting rid of some stocking and some new stockings. So she had a sale and I bought a couple of things. Um, one of these is going to be a gift. Um, do I show it? Oh, I'll show it. The odds of, if you get, so we're doing a mystery exchange at the retreat and this is part of my gift, but one of them is anyway. So I bought a couple of little bags. So yeah, the Tui with the Kōwhai and the Fantail or Piwaka Waka with um, various um, flowers and so pretty, just little notions pouches. They're really cute, just simply made. Um, and yeah, one of them I'm giving away with some stuff in it for my mystery exchange. Um, if you get it and you watch this, you know it was me, but um, I would be happy to receive one. So yeah, I bought a couple of bags and something else which I can't show you. Um, so it is actually a surprise. Um, just because, yeah, she had a sale on, which was really good. And we have to keep our mystery gift under $25. So a few new things on sale and a few things from my um, rehomed re to sort of probably value about, you know, Paid $27, probably worth about 40 so hopefully they'll be okay. So that was kind of nice, yeah. I um, haven't bought any charts or anything. I'm, again, trying to save my pennies for Dunedin and other things that are coming up. Um, but I did do a little bit of stitching, and I, after I show you my stitching, because the video will be a bit short, I'll show you a couple of kits I've got. I've kitted up a couple of things recently. Um, but yeah, stitching. I, last week maybe, week before, I can't remember, I showed you um, a chart from Darlene Dion Designs called 10 Karat Gold, oh, I just had to stitch it, so I picked that up, um, 10, karat gold, bleh, 10 Karat Gold by Darlene Dion Designs, 32 Count Dirty Linen from Zweigart and using the Call for DMC, started it on the 16th of April and I finished it on the 17th of April. Um, actually, I did finish it on the 16th of April, but realised I had started the words in the wrong place, so I frogged them and researched them on the 17th, because I'm a munter. Um, and here it is. So Darlene did her model on a hand-dyed sort of minty green that she did, but I picked this lovely dirty linen. And yeah, when I'd started stitching 10 carats, I'd counted down from the first carat. So I had 10 carat gold starting here and finishing about here. And I was like, oh, can I add something in there? I was like, oh. The amount of time thinking about what I could stick there, I just frogged it and restitched it. So yeah, it's so, I mean, of course it's my colors. I love it. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm planning on finishing this. I'd hoped to get it finished, fully finished. But I only got the fabric yesterday. And then I, then I just, then I wasn't sure, so then I bought another piece of fabric, and now I'm going, I'm not sure. I've got two pieces of fabric, not sure what I'm going to do. Might use both. I don't know. So I'm just going to make that into a little cushion because it's so cute. And thank you, Darlene, for a lovely design. It just made me smile. Um, when I was at the quilting store yesterday and sort of holding it up, the ladies here thought it was really cute. So I said, oh, did you make that yourself? I went, well, no, but someone fantastic in Canada did. So yeah, that's one little start and finish. I'm quite enjoying pulling out all these little smalls every now and then to give me little finishes while I chug away at my big whips. Speaking of biggish whips, medium sized whips, I pulled out, <clears throat> I was looking for something, I don't know. I've got many project bags with two projects in them and I kind of forget what's in them sometimes. And I pulled out and I went, oh, pomegranate sampler. So I don't know why I was surprised that it was in the pomegranate bag, but I was, because I was, whatever. Uh, so this is by Fox and Rabbit Designs. Um, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm stitching this on uh, something apricot. 40 Count Apricot Dream by Country Stitch using the Cottage Garden Threads. Um, Felix and Cloudy Day are what the, I think the model was stitched in. Um, and I started this as start number 2250 back in June last year. Um, and when you last saw it, I had the bottom three rows of letters done. And I stitched and stitched and stitched and I'm 
I'm quite quite well along. <laughs> I stitched these three rows of letters and then I started on the frame up here and I've started filling in. I ran out of Felix. Felix is the dark colour and I didn't stitch the two birds. So the two birds, I didn't have enough thread. I was left with a part single strand and I'm not going to buy another skein of Gen common cottage garden threads to stitch two bird outlines. So I had a look through and I had another cottage garden thread which was similar and you, you won't be able to tell the difference. I know it's different and if I look at it hard enough I can convince myself I know it's d different. It's slightly darker. Um, and it's uh, the colour Haviland. Um, but you can't tell. Probably, but yeah, so I basically, as I, I knew I wasn't going to have enough. So I thought, well, I'll just stitch equally and sort of worked my way and did that bit, then did the pomegranates here and then the little squiggly bits. And I, and I had enough to do, you know, maybe one of the bird's heads. So I didn't, I just had a look through and I had a look at a couple of different threads. And in the end, I decided... The thing with um, Felix is that it's not very variegated. So some of the cottage garden threads are quite variegated and some, you know, have multicolours. But Felix was a very just off black, like a slightly kind of the black of new of black jeans. Not, you know, not really, really pitch black. And Haviland is just a little bit darker. Um, and I think you can, you know, when you look at it really close, you can kind of tell the density in the wings is a little bit more solid, but I haven't got that density anywhere else. So that's why I sort of thought, well, I'll leave the birds because they're different. And by the time you fill them in, also they're kind of mostly filled in solid, again, quite different where the pomegranates have quite a bit of white still. Anyway, I'm like, I'm not buying. Anyway, no one has it in New Zealand. I have to order it. Um, Felix and I'm just not ordering because you know what will happen I'd order one skein and go well I can't let it travel on its own and I'd spend $160 because it would fall in my cart so anyway um yeah I'm nearly finished so I'm going to finish this tonight it won't it won't take me that long um I basically stitched the two bird outlines and filled in this bit this morning so um, all I've got to do is, you know, that pomegranate, those two leaves, that little leaf, there's a couple of leaves here, finish the birds and that top one. <laughs> I've got to fill in the top bit, but I'm really happy with it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have enough cloudy day. Um, because I'm, you know, I've got well over half a skein left and there's, yeah. So yes, I'm going to get that finished. So that will be very cool. Um, and that's my stitching for the week. So, I mean, there's quite a lot of stitching in there. And I'm really pleased to be getting close to a finish. Um, but yeah, I'll get that finished for next week. Which means then I'm going to allow myself another new start. So, I don't want to have my pomegranate bag empty. So, I will be starting, once I finish that pomegranate, I'll be planning a start of this one. Because it has pomegranates on it. And it is Friends of the Heart. I've had this kitted up for ages. Um, I can tell by the sticker that I purchased this from Art and Frame in Christchurch. Had it kitted up for ages. I feel like I might have kitted this up with a cord for. Let's have a look. Polywog. Onyx, egg, yeah, I think it's mostly the cord for. Um, and I've got 35 count, oh, just 35 count vintage marble. So I uh, wanted the Zweigart printed fabrics. Um, that's what I'm going to switch it on. And I think, yeah, mostly I've got cord for. I might have, I know Terracotta is cord for. Mulberry is cool. Yeah, I think it's probably, which is unusual for me. I remember buying some of the flosses <clears throat> when I was in Dunedin. Um, 
but she only had about three. She well, didn't have all of them, did she? They didn't have all of them. They bought a couple of them. Yeah, it's a lovely palette because, you know, <laughs> it's very autumn-y and very autumnal. And I do enjoy a autumnal palette. That um, blue battleship, I really love that. That sort of steely blue. Anyway, that on the vintage marble. I look really good. So that will be a start. I haven't had a Plum Street on the go for ages. I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, will I start it this week coming? I don't know. Um, I'll start it soon. It might be this week. We'll see how we go. Maybe I'll start it on Tuesday. At, you know, NZ day. I don't know. So that is all ready to go. Got my working copy printed. Then also talking about retreat in a couple of weeks. I want to have a new start at the retreat. Um, and I've had I purchased this a while ago. <laughs> it is autumn right now. I love autumn colours. So this is um yeah, the colours of autumn. De Farben des Hu I can't do German. De, De Farben des Herbsters. The colours of autumn. By um, so this is a historic stick muster. So Dorothy Kanzi is the designer. I just love it. So oh God, I can't remember who it is. Someone else in New Zealand was stitching on this recently, and it reminded me that I'm like, oh, they'd started it recently. I'm like, oh, I remember I had that, and I had it mostly kitted up. Um, I was missing one of the. I've already put them on for things. This is all the call for Auvergne Soie Soie d'Auge. I was missing one and no, we had it online. But anyway, um, Christine, who I'm going to stay with down in Dunedin, um, I messaged you because it looked like Stitch Witches had it and I didn't want to purchase it and post, pay postage for one. So she picked it up for me. So I picked that up when I get to her. So 2225 um, was one I just couldn't find in stock anywhere. Um, but yeah, got them all ready to go. So I think it must be quite an orangey one. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm trying to look at the colour going, what's missing? Um, I might not have enough white. I might have to get another white because the white is actually stitched. So the white snowflakes is actually stitched. It's not just the background. And I'm going to be super boring and stitch it on 35 count white white out. Just, just get the overlocker out. So am I going to regret doing a 35 count project with, I don't know what the lighting is going to be like in the wild, stitching in the wild possibly, but it doesn't mean I need to stitch a huge amount and I could very well just, you know, work on one corner. Um, so I think I'll probably attack it like that. Uh, do all the light green. Um, actually, I don't know. I'm quite quite keen on once you stitch that tree, get all that colour. I don't know how I'm going to stitch it. Um, I'm going to give it a go stitching this using my iPhone because it's I've got it on the Silk app. Um, but you know, the I could print it. I might print it as a backup because you can print off there now as well. So we'll see. But that's going to be my start at retreat. And then I'll take a couple of other projects as well because I don't want to just stitch on that. Especially if I find it difficult to stitch on 35 count without a decent lighting. I might take a light with me. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But yeah, so there's a couple of new starts coming up. One probably this week will be Friends of the Heart once I finish Pomegranate Sampler. And then one to start a retreat. And I've got one more thing to show you. Okay, so one more thing to show you. Ages ago, the lovely Susie, she's a New Zealand stitcher and we're stitching Crowns of the Kingdom together as a sale. She gifted me this. I'll just show you the cover sheet because it's a million loose pages. The Common Thread 2 by Jeanette Douglas. And I love it. 
and it's full of specialty stitches. It's all mostly silks and there's some charms on there and all that. So you can buy the charm pack and all that. But I decided to make use of my silks that I have and cut it up from stash. And I've been slowly chipping away at it. And last weekend I just finally focused on it. Um, and I think I'm going to be really happy with it. So I've got things here. Um, and because it's um, got all the specialty bits and pieces, I am going to stitch it on 32 count. So I've just got 32 count cream linen. That's what I got. And <clears throat> I found some beads in my stash that are... Um, one of them is actually called for, I think this one, 42011, don't quote me, but um, it's all petite beads and another one that's quite different from what's called for, but there's only about 30 needed and I've got a partial. And then there's one called like um, Iris and I just got this one. So not quite the same, but they'll be close enough, especially since my silks are not the same. So I've got beads from my stash. You can see, see how old these are, because <laughs> they are very yellow. But yeah, beads from my stash. This is the called for Soie Perle, because that's, I don't have anything similar to that in my stash. Um, I've got a bunch of charms that I've collected through, you know, just buying bunches of charms and stuff. So I've got several keys. I'll use one of them, some hearts, some crowns, a fleur de lis. Um, so I've got more than enough charms. It calls for five charms, so I've got about eight there. And I'll wait till the end to see what I like. Um, <clears throat> keeping everything in my 2020 retreat bag that we got from our Wellington retreat. And then I just have a whole lot of silks, some of which are similar to what they're called for and some that are going to be different, but doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what they all are. A lot of them are silks for you. Um, and I've written on the back, like, you know, I'm going to use this instead of Balsois Maple Leaf. This is going to be instead of Accru. Um, I don't know, probably Balsois. Um, this, you know, meadow light green, sea green, um, Belsoir Chester Blue. Uh, so yeah, none of these are called for summer tan, etc. I'm not going to read them all out, but yeah, I've got all my a whole lot of beautiful silks, and some of them are not used a lot. Um, most so these are all silk silks for you, silks for you. The colours are stunning. It's going to be so much fun. But four greens, three purples, a few golds and oranges, some greys, some fawns. Um, and then there's a couple of variegated ones. And I've got, like for the leisureine down the bottom, for example, is a quite highly variegated one. So I've picked one of my very variegated silks for you. And then I've got a couple of um, Thread Gatherer. Silken colours, just because they're like the soft, they've got the subtle colours and stuff. So yeah, a whole bunch of silk. That's going to be fun. I'm probably going to need to do this in a frame, uh, in a Q-snap or a frame hoop, because parts of it, like you know, there's some satin stitch and some. Uh, I don't know if there's actually any pulled thread work. But there's definitely some fancy white work up here and in here. And this sort of bargello, um, all sorts of things. So yeah, it's just showing you up close. It's so pretty. So finally got that kitted up. I'm not don't know when I'm gonna start it. I need to take this, I need to get all this copied because there's a lot and I need to scribble on it. Um, but I'm really excited to finally have it kitted up with what I think will be a really good um, a, a, a um, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I was going to say complimentary, but I didn't mean that. Um, it will be 
an homage to the <laughs> model, but you know, like that would cost a lot of money to get that, get it up. Um, when I have all these beautiful silks that I've already spent a lot of money on. So I'm really, really pleased to be able to go through my stash and, oh, I've also got a Karen collection as well that I've had left over from something that I'm going to use instead of Olive Grove I've written on the back. So yeah, really keen to get that done. I don't think I'll start that for a little while. Um, I've got a few... Like I really want to get the Giovanni's um, Giovanni Giovanni's alphabet started, and they're because they're both that's not all silk, but they're like uh, quite. Um, they're gonna need a hoop. They're gonna need um, you know good tension and all the specialty stitches. I don't want to have like three projects on the go that have specialty stitches. So I think that Giovanni's alphabet will come first. But this feels like a start for next year, which means I'm going to start Giovanni's Alphabet this year. And it's only April. I've still got plenty of time, right? But yeah, I just wanted to share that because I know quite a few of you enjoy seeing how I get stuff up. Um, and basically, I just went to one, two, three, stitch, looked up each of the threads and went, oh yeah, this colour is, you know, in cooey of that. Like, they're not the same, but they're complementary or derivative, I don't know. They, they're they harmonious enough. And I've got greens where I need greens and oranges where I need oranges and stuff. So yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So I will wrap this up. Um, I appreciate you all for coming along. Um, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Um, that's what a like means. And don't forget, down the doobly-doo are all the contact details. If you want to get in contact with me, I have a whole bunch of postcards that I wrote up last weekend that I'm going to send out. Probably eight postcards I caught up on. That's $3 a stamp to send a postcard from New Zealand. Bloody hell. So um, I've got about eight postcards to send out. I've got a giveaway to send out. I'm sorry, I didn't get that out yet. Um, it's all sitting over on the table ready for me to take to the post office. I'm going to get some finishing done hopefully this afternoon to show you next week, which will be quite exciting. Um, looking forward to seeing you all next week. And in the meantime, find joy in your stitching. And as always, don't let your needles rust. Ciao.